Hey everyone, so in this video we are going to take a look at how to create a simple day-night cycle, so let's get right into it. So when you create a new scene, it has a main camera and a directional light, and really that's all you need to start the basics of a day-night cycle. So let's just put a couple objects in the scene here. So we'll create, uh, we'll, I already created a plane, we'll just drag and drop it into the scene, so it's supposed to be like a field, and we'll just put in a single tree. Okay, so the directional light object. This is actually one of the more misleading objects you're going to deal with because whereas most objects, their position matter, the position of the plane matters, the position of the camera matters, the position of the tree matters. The position of the directional light is completely and utterly irrelevant. What this is showing you is the direction that the light is traveling, but it's from an infinite distance away. so like a distant sun, that kind of thing. Okay. So, this position is not the origin of the light. It is not the source of the light. So if this were a spotlight, yes. If this is almost any other object, yes, that's its position. But for directional light, and this is really important, that is not the source. That is not the origin. The light is actually coming from an infinite distance away. This is simply showing you the direction that light is traveling. Okay, so the light is traveling straight down, and sure enough, there's a shadow directly underneath the tree. So what we're going to do, we're simply going to have the direction of that light change, and the way we do it is by rotating the directional light. So we rotate the directional light, and that will, uh, so what's going to happen is the light will like point off in one direction as if it's setting, and then it'll be pointing up at one point as if... Uh, it's nighttime, and then eventually it'll rotate all the way around, and it'll continue to cycle. So it's easier to see rather than to explain. So what we're going to do with the directional light, we are going to do a couple of things. We're going to add a component, we're going to add physics, and we're going to add rigid body. We are going to get rid of gravity. Not that it should matter, because again, position doesn't matter. I'm just being careful in case something weird happens. Like if the object travels really far, maybe Unity Auto deletes it, or it creates memory issues, that kind of thing. So we'll just get rid of gravity to be safe. We'll get rid of angular drag, because if we don't, it will slow down over time. And then next, we're going to add a script. So right-click, Create, c Shop. we'll call this Sun. We'll click on directional light. We drag and drop sun, and then we open it up. And this just requires a single line of code. We're going to put this in the start section because we want this to begin as soon as the object is instantiated. So get component, the rigid body component we just added. We said we're going to add angular velocity because we're adding rotation. And on what of the three axes do we want to apply it to? We only want it to apply to X. So we'll make this really small, like 0.5F. Whenever you use a decimal in a vector 3, you have to add F or else it confuses unity. So if you're using a whole number, 1, 2, 3, you don't have to use an F. But if you're using a decimal, 1.5, 2.3, you have to use an F. Comma, 0, comma, 0. So there's going to be rotation on the x-axis, but not on the y and not on the z. We'll save that. We'll come back to our scene. And if we click on our, well, actually, we already have the light selected. So x is the red arrow pointing horizontally. So we want it to rotate along that one. Okay. So if I didn't forget anything, that should already work. Now, there's going to be a few visual anomalies, which we'll talk about. See, you see the skybox sunset. See that glow? We'll talk about that in just a second. And then the sun rises and the shadow is coming from the other direction. And then, sure enough, light travels again. So, just like that, you've created the basics of a day-night cycle. Now, obviously, it's way too fast, so you would have this be much, much slower. I, I don't want to run over and over again and waste your time, but it's probably going to be something like 0 0.02 or 0 0.01. Again, depends on how long you want the day-night cycle uh, to run. Uh, survival games, like say Seven Days to Die, you can set a day-night cycle to 20 minutes, one hour, two hours. 
So you would simply have to change this. So rather than this being a constant, that is a number we actually put in, you'd have this be a variable. And based on the setting that the user chooses, the variable would change how quickly this works. Like uh, if you want it to be really fast, like I believe it was in Deadly Premonition, if you wanted to skip to later on in the day, your character would like smoke a cigarette or something, and you would see like time lapse really fast. So that's what you could do. You could have this change based on if they're trying to pass time. Okay, so let's run that one more time. So because it's so slow, it's really kind of imperceptible now, which is basically what you want. You don't want it to be moving really, really fast, but you can see it is indeed moving because the shadow is going past the mouse. So again, it all depends on how fast you want the day night cycle to be. That might actually still be too fast again, depending on what you want that to be. Okay, so I mentioned the visual anomaly of the glow. This is a plane, which means it's one-sided. So when the light is coming up, okay, because again, even though the directional light is above this, it doesn't matter. The source is an infinite direct, uh, infinite distance away. So the when this is pointing up, the light is coming from below. Well, this is a plane, which means it's one-sided, so there's nothing blocking it. So you shouldn't have that issue. You're probably going to use blocks, or you're going to have an actual terrain, so you're not going to have that issue. At least you shouldn't have that issue. Okay, so that's the basics, but there's a couple problems. Other than that little bit of glow that we mentioned, there's the issue of it being pitch black. So you probably don't want it to pitch black. You want there to be ambient light. So you can actually use a directional light to make ambient light. And the way you do that is you're just going to remove shadows, okay? So one of the things that makes this a directional light is the fact that it casts a shadow. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna copy the directional light and then we're just gonna remove a couple of things. We don't need the rigid body because it's not gonna move. We don't need the script because it's not going to move. And now we have two lights that both have an intensity of one. So we've doubled the intensity, presuming that the calculated the calculation is additive. So as opposed to being like exponential or something like that. So it's too bright. Okay. So what we want to do, if we thought the initial intensity of one was okay, then that means the combined number should not exceed one. So since we want the majority of the light to go away with the sun, we could make this say 0.9. And for the directional light, you could make it uh, 0.1. So 0.1 plus 0.9 is one. So the amount of the total intensity should be the same. Now only 0.9 of it is going away. Now, again, I said that this is meant to be a simple example. You could make a more complex example where perhaps this is 1.0 and this is 0.1, but this also rotates and maybe you give it like a blue hue and this is meant to be moonlight. Now, obviously we know that moonlight is really sunlight reflecting off of the moon, but you know you, you can be creative with you know there's a degree of artistic license and you're trying to make a stylized appearance so that's what you could do so rather than having a static light you could just have there be two directional lights one is much much weaker um, doesn't cast a shadow and you can change the color so like it's blue so it creates like a blue hue or something like that problem is if i do the blue hue now it would affect this. Again, I just want you to know that there are options. I am never ever saying that what I do is the best way or the only way it's meant to be usually the simplest way to get you to get a foot into the door and to start to understand how to do these things. Okay, so the directional light is 0.1 and we said that we're going to get rid of shadow. So right here, shadow type defaults to soft shadow. We're gonna set that to no shadows. And if I didn't forget anything, that should do it. And actually, we're going to speed this up again. So let's put this back to like, say, 0.3. Because we want it to stay night for a little bit. So shadow's moving faster again. 
And now, as you can see, you've got some light. It's not pitch black anymore. And just for comparisons, we will just disable the second light just so you can see that it was indeed pitch black. Okay, so a huge difference. So I think that takes care of the basics. So I think that's probably about where I'm gonna stop the video. Again, this is meant to be introductory. This should be easily integrated into whatever project you're already working on. Because again, when you create a project, it should have a, a directional light to begin with. If not, it's easy enough to create a directional light. You can just do game object, light, directional light. And like I said, the big takeaway is that position for the directional light is irrelevant. It's traveling from an infinite distance away. You're simply saying what direction it's pointing at. The anomaly, the visual anomaly of the glow, again, uh, is because we're using a plane. And so the light can come up from under the plane because planes are one-sided. So you shouldn't have an issue with that. And we added uh, the directional light for the purposes of making a moon. And I think that's about it. So if you like this video, please uh, uh, do a like for the video and uh, leave a comment if you would like to see a more advanced tutorial. Like I said, we could do things like adding a moon with a moon glow and we could do other things as well. Um, instead of using the default skybox, what we can do is you can change this from skybox to solid color. And then what you would do is you would change the color over time. Uh, like I said, that would really be a separate video uh, because uh, the main reason is that the um, you have to get into using I enumerator. Okay. And so you have to get into coroutines and that in itself is really a tutorial. So, okay, that should about do it. So if you want to see something specific, like I said, leave a comment. And if you'd be so kind to like the video, I'm trying to get a sense of what people actually want because I personally don't find the YouTube analytics to be very useful. Anyway, so I uh, hope this was helpful and please enjoy the rest of your day.